Well, there's not much bloody ISO fucking settings I can turn up on this fucking smartphone, but my eye is just seeing a little bit of proportion more. But the camera is just not picking it up much. Um, I might learn upload the uh, the SD card four K um, Sony camera image video recording. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> But I had to have the ISO turned up to the maximum on the camera and I just can't find the bloody setting there. Or well, I seem to seem to find a setting to take a picture. Uh, but I can't seem to get the freaking, um, you know. Because it looks like watching a dying xenon lamp. My eye is registering a little bit more brightness, but the... Uh, ba -ba -bum. Barely see the menu when it comes up on the screen there. <coughs> well, the camera is barely seeing it. <coughs> and I've got the uh, brightness for the blacks, that is. That's turned up to about 30. I'll take it up a little bit more. 40. 50. But, problem there being with the fabric and such is because it's a little bit now you can see it but the camera is seeing it just still a little bit on the dim side fractionally obviously you can make out the movie at Star Trek 2 <laughs> even a blind man can tell that um, but you know the spandex black fabric material that I'm using needs to be stretched out more that's why it's all crimpled over on that side it's not too bad over on that side it's just, just a little bit stretched um, but it's not pulled down. It's only temporarily just to see how it looks. And I knew it wouldn't be uh, <coughs> brilliant. I had pretty low expectation. <coughs> Unlike these black paints on YouTube or on home theatres where they get where those um, things get banned um, because it sounds like they're selling a load of BS snake oil. And well, like I say, is with this fabric material I'm using. Um, it looked kind of promising because it had a um, it had a sparkle effect in the fabric, and that yeah I can see it. The camera I'd have to be pretty close to the screen so you could just see this little it's like little twinkle kind of like star effects, but not really because even in bright images there I can see them, these little sparkle effects and. Um, just randomly scattered and it's distracting but the fabric material is transparent because light will pass through it <coughs> with a headlight torch which I did in a video live video but I had to uh, cease the video because I had to charge the camera up a little bit and I'm only making a short video because I only got about 27% left on the camera I think at the moment but it's not really great is it um the fabric was about, I think it was about £30. Uh, there was another fabric I looked at, but it's difficult to say whether it'd be good or bad or the same result. And that was just a little bit more. It was just under 80 and I wasn't going to pay that. This is five metres. I've got five metres of that fabric. Um, and yes, you could stretch it a little bit more so you'll get a few more inches and um, it just drops down from the f uh, top of the screen down to um, the bottom and it could be stretched out just a proportion more so bam, it fits the width ideal um, I still, even still, have to this white spandex that I got many years ago it's double layered or such so it'd have to be kind of... Um, trial and error with that because it's the way and the type of the you know the light if it's so transparent the fabric light's going to pass through it uh, so much <coughs> um, um, but turning up the contrast and the brightness levels too much on the projector I think is not very advisable so it's only for a temporary temporarily and also it puts la it puts the lamp time down less, you know. So in a nutshell, um, 
I've seen what these black paint fabric um, materials look like when they they're showing them on, you know, and I can tell that the light level is dimming down so much, and it's like watching a dying xenon lamp with these home video projections. You, you need something like a Z, you need a proper cinema xenon lamp because it, you know it. At the end of the day, how have we seen how have we seen cinema? At least my age, and many others, but I know the history. And when cinema was doing it in the early days, it was doing it on a white bed sheet. I've used a, a white bed sheet in the past uh, with another LCD projector uh, many years ago that I rolled it up and just tied it up sort of thing and then just placed it above the screen um well above the um in the room and it was just hung up and all i do is just undo it and it just drops down and i'll just project onto it and bed sheets were used in the early days and uh, obviously very large bed sheets um they had a probably a a use for maybe um, maybe three times or something um, because of smoking in cinemas and the, uh, the sort of smokes of tobacco um, got onto the screen it's get in fact it goes everywhere okay and um, I've got things floating around up here I don't know why um, and so it goes in for wash and then comes back, you know. I'm not sure how much they paid for those things back then, those bed sheet things. Um, but after so many washes, it starts to shrink and then stretch, uh, 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 rip. So they have put another one in. Uh, plastic perforation screens, um, even though bed sheets were transparent, okay, they were acoustically transparent. Uh, cinema sound systems back then were uh, high efficiency uh, horn, uh, didn't have very good frequency range uh, for response. Um, they were very, very limited, but they're early days. It's just like me trying to test this black stuff, right? It's trial and error. Okay, but you don't want to spend too much of that, you know, and then wasting your lamp time on the projector because that's what I'm thinking. And then it's just a waste of bloody lamp time, you know what I mean? But I've got about 83 hours left on the... Not 83, I've only used 83 hours on this laser projector. So this laser projector will, theoretically, will last many years, the lamp, until uh, it needs to be changed over and the projector by then, even though it's, I think, kind of obsolete now. And video projectors go obsolete really fast. What, when you see them on, up for sale or up for grabs, they're already out of date. They've already got another one in the planning process because they're just greedy mother. They're just greedy bastards. Thinking, you know, you need this, you need all these pure bloody this. This thing improves the bloody resolution. That oh, it's all bullshit. <sighs> There's only one pure resolution, and that's fucking film. At the end of the day. Pure, pure colour, put pure light onto it, up onto the screen. Um, so why don't I take that, if I take, if I, I'm going to just take this fabric down now, okay? And then you'll see the difference. So, hang on. So I'll just resume. And directly, I'm just going to go up to it and just pull it, pull it down. Because it's only got, it's only attached with Velcro. And I can already see how bloody blinding it's getting on the bloody side of the image. Uh, just starting to peel it off. I can already see how blinding it's getting. Fucking hell, it's blinding me almost. Fucking hell, that's too bright. Uh, maybe I could use this as a black masking. <laughs> Um, but um, I'll just put that down there you can see how bloody bright the image has gone now and in fact it's 
probably a little bit overpowered. It's not too overpowering. Um, so you can see, you know, but it makes um, space look a little bit too bright, if you know what I mean. So. And it's really overdoing it too much because the um, the image is um, starting to have problems with hot spots in the image and it's starting to look crap. So let's go into the... Oh yeah, point the remote at the bloody... Uh, what's it? Um, image... Oh gosh, um, think, 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 think. I really hate this projector. All right. There, boom, turn the brightness down. Brightness does your blacks. And I've got too much contrast on there still. But now the blacks are blacker. But there's still a little bit oddness there with space, with the V, you know. Still something odd there. I'm going to turn the contrast down and turn the color down. Um, where's the color? Notch that down a bit. Actually, I think it needs just notching down just a little bit more, actually. Come to think of it. And this is a DVD. It's not, a, not one of these crappy 4K discs. I don't need this. I don't need to see this crap on the uh, the other Paramount 4K crap. Because it, it hasn't got real film grain. It looks, I don't know what, it just looks appalling. Um, I think there's a few other settings on there that are turned up. I'm just going to pause the video for a sec. And I'll just turn down some of that dynamic black or whatever the heck it means. They're just, they're, they, these are just preset bloody video mode settings. Gimmicks, I think. Just bloody gimmicks. Um, but, oh dear. I mean, I mean, come on. You saw it on the bloody black fabric. I saw it myself and it looked like I'm watching a dead zine, a dying xenon lamp. And all these, you know, projection paint screen colour things. I mean, still some of this hair, that colour there hair, is a tonal different colour compared to what the camera's picking up. Maybe if I tap the screen, you know, adjust it a little bit, yeah. But it's kind of going the opposite way sort of thing. Because the cap, yeah, so if I touch the screen, you, you adjust your uh, brightness levels and so forth. Um, but I know in some way the Alva ribbons and such in the camera um, are pretty good. If that could be, if you could hack into the camera, the set, you know, get into the video mode processing sort of thing, if you know what I mean, <coughs> and, and use that as a an engine, colour engine to, you know, adjust the, um, because like I say, a video camera can see infrared, the eye can't see it, um, you know, just as uh, the sniffer I got, it it, it can pick out where all these noises are, where you've got a ground hum coming through somewhere and you don't know how it's getting there. And you can use that to trace around all the cable wiring, any device, you know, and it's kind of like an extension to the ears as well. It's kind of like, a, almost like a Star Trek tricorder in a way, um, which you can connect onto an oscilloscope, you know, so you can actually see the random of the uh, the frequency noise all moving around and you think what the heck is all that noise there it should be like it should be like flat you know and you got all this bloody noise then coming up and then it should be flat it should be like but kind of very soft noise but very low down in signal noise ratio below 100 db well below 
the more the well below, the more the better. Um, but that's just going to have to do. But I think there's still something else turned on on my, it could be the uh, settings on the, could be the settings on here. Um, yeah, not too many of them are turned up very high. That kind of really brightness contrast, the kind of contrast is only turned down a fraction. But I could do that a little bit more on the projector, you know what I mean? It's just my eyes are just trying to readjust to all that, what I was looking at. It just, this is, this is just about as good as it's going to have to be. The only thing it needs to go around here, down the side to down the bottom, around the framing, is I just need masking. So maybe I'll just make um, this fabric into um, a masking. I don't need particularly masking. Well, I think, yeah, I think I would. But the problem there is you've got to adjust the, uh, the projection zoom. So if I play a widescreen movie, I've got to uh, reduce the image down a bit so that the widescreen image is kind of... Um, So, yeah. so a widescreen image would be kind of about maybe about here sort of thing maybe about there and then it opens out wider for scope um, but it's still at the same uh, uh, the vertical height doesn't change uh, but you've got to readjust the projector light, uh, uh, the, uh, the the uh, zoom. you got to dial it back a bit. So, you know, um, with cinema, you just, um, you don't do any of that. You've got an, um, an aperture plate that goes in the projector. You've got um, the lens turret to switch uh, through uh, common widescreen flat, that is flat to scope uh there is a there will be and most cinemas will have a, a a lens for academy ratio but that is a format that's hardly used unless you get the wizard of oz in and you're showing the wizard of oz unlike that limax crap um which is total bs um so you know that now uh and then you got the uh, the masking and of course, the light dowser, the dowser that turns, that puts the light onto the, through the it through the film gate, through the film gate onto the lens onto the screen. <clears throat> um, there's none of that on this projector. There's no dowser. There's no um, aperture plate. <laughs> there's no flat. There's no scope lens. You know, um, because theoretically, that is a flat. In a way, that's a flat lens. And then you've got, uh, you know, if you stretch the image vertically and then, you know, so it would, um, the proportion on this screen would look wrong because it's a 16.9. So I'll just keep the scope image between. But if I had a widescreen on there, it's got to be the same vertical height as the uh, scope movie, only it's less in the width. And then if I wanted to say, like, maybe, maybe mimic this like 70 millimeter. Hey, come on, cut, give me a, give me a break. <laughs> anyway, that's that.